So I'm going to be uh, doing a bit of a preamble because we're probably already live and that's absolutely fine. So anybody who is watching this, uh, welcome to the live stream. This is one of those uh, impromptu style live streams that I do tend to do on a Wednesday. Welcome to Winning Wednesday. And uh, this is just a chance for us to have a bit of a chat with one of the Forge members and uh, you know when they've had a win and, and say, oh, what's been happening? How did you get that? Where did you go? And introduce uh, a very cool business person. So uh, I'd love you to uh, meet Robert. Robert, welcome to the session. Hi. Fantastic. Uh, tell everyone uh, who you are, where you're from, and uh, a little about your business. Sure, thanks, Russell. Um, so I've been developing uh, products and technology since 93. And I've been on every road you can imagine from research to development, uh, managing, uh, throughout um, manufacturing, getting to uh, uh, to the markets. In the last 15 years, I've been focused on medtech, developing medical devices from CT scanners, wearables, IoT, things that go in the body, outside the body, uh, whatever. <laughs> and you're a super smart guy because like <laughs> everything oh, you. you said that is like expert. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so... Um, uh, so I love this story that we're going to tell because really it's um, uh, you've been doing this for a long time. This is nothing yes. new to you necessarily, but you've moved to Australia and found sort of it's, it's been a little different. And um, exactly, yeah. how's the last few years been? Yes, I, I immigrated six years, almost seven years ago now, uh, and the landscape here is very different. I didn't find the uh, huge companies I used to work with: um, Intel, IBM, Medtronic, Philips, to mention a few. Uh, I mean, you have the names here, but they're not doing R and D. They're not doing manufacturing. Not here. Uh, it's yeah. mainly sales and some business activity or support. Uh, there's lots of uh, work happening. There's lots of innovation. People have ideas, and there's lots of silos. Um, um, engineering consultancies, marketing consultancies, yeah. uh, manufacturers, uh, but nothing that combines all of them. So, in, in the last, in the first five years when I came here, I worked with engineering consultancies trying to liaise between clients who have money and ideas and the engineers in the firm that want to create something for them and go to production. Mm -hmm. But then from my experience going, stepping out of that narrow step into the whole product in, in a business, uh, who's going to do customer support? What is the supply chain? Uh, what is the revenue model? Does it work? Is the market ready for it? All that. Okay. It's beyond just putting a prototype on the table. That's where I thought I'd like to contribute my experience and really see more innovation creating business, not just uh, hitting a milestone of we did this, we did that, but actually become a successful business and um, be like a client whisperer, if you want. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and I've been doing this in the last, um, since February last year, just before the pandemic hit. And you come with a whole set of expertise there, right? And it's all about uh, how to get a, a, a profitable product, how to take it to yes. market, There's all this really great stuff. But when we met like, a few months back, it was really about um, you're spinning your wheels, you're not doing the work you want to be doing, and you're kind of stuck yes. in jobs that you kind of have to do rather than things you necessarily wanted to do. Yes, right? when, when I get the jobs uh, to begin with. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's been a painful experience. Um, I was very dedicated to it. I, I survived it for 18 months without really earning half what I used to earn as an employee somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I'm passionate about it, so I wanted to keep going. But mainly, as you said, it was getting jobs uh, that are hands-on again, which is not exactly why I created this. It was to, to give the full-blown perspective and, and the big picture strategy. Um, so I couldn't sell that. I only sold gigs here and there of hands and work. Yeah. Um, and then even then it wasn't mostly med tech, but just any any kinds of startups. So I, I felt like the, like the problem is I'm not known for what I know and I'm not sure how to sell it. And I think that's where we engaged. And yeah, and I've heard I've heard this story so many times that you've got like an expert, especially an expert that comes from another country into this country and they they feel like they need to start again. And, and it is a little bit of a different process because I know that I've worked with companies coming into Australia and they have to change yes. a number of the things they do. It's a small market, there's, there's that as well. But when we spoke, I'm like, 
I think we can get this done. I yes. reckon we can build a process that, that can get you the work that you wanted. And so one of the reasons I want to get you on today is because <laughs> that's where you are. You're now winning yes. work in the space yes. doing what you want, yeah? That's right, absolutely. Um, even with uh, clients who consider me a competitor. <laughs> Fantastic. And and we're in COVID. Um, yes. Lockdown, you're in lockdown as well, yeah? Yes, obviously. And so even with that, we were able to just we were able to put the process in place and actually make it happen. Absolutely, uh, that's right. So, um, what did you learn along the way from, uh, I guess, first in engaging with the program and and now to where you are? Is there anything in particular that you reckon's a light bulb moment that made a difference? Um, it, it, it was like many many steps, many small steps yeah. uh, that each one in silo had its own impact. Even when in the beginning you said, let's focus on one market because I was really all over the place. Uh, I have 15 years experience in medical device, but I was hesitant to put it all there. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to engage with whoever developing a product, um, regardless of their size, whether it's medtech, ag agriculture, mining, whatever. Yep. Um, so just that focus and then from there, follow steps of how to engage with the community of, of medtech companies, mm -hmm. how to, how to uh, offer what I want to do in a clear way that I like it. <laughs> that yeah, that's, that I, I would say, cool wow, I will buy myself. <laughs> yeah, I really liked what the, the sort of breakthroughs we had there too, because um, uh, you are a smart fella and I'm working with a lot of smart people, as you know, and it's often that the, the spinning of the wheels happens because they're like overthinking what the simple step is. Yes. So often it's don't say something. Actually, yes. it's, it's <laughs> say less, yes. uh, keep it super simple and um, uh, don't think about how you're going to create the value. Understand that you are valuable simply through the process. It is. And, you know, um, this first client that actually bought what I want to offer, the way I want to offer it. He engaged with me before we talked a few days mm -hmm. and already suggested to me to come as a project manager because they are in grave need for one. Yep. And I was on on the ropes, so to speak. And I said, yeah, yeah, sure, let's talk about it. And I said, you know what, I'll, I'll invite my um, my operations manager as well and we'll talk tomorrow. And then I rushed, rushed, talked to Russell. <laughs> I remember, I remember, I remember I said this. too. I remember I said, don't say anything. Yes. Let them talk until they've got nothing else to say, then tell them what you don't want to do. <laughs> and and I did in a sort of way. Uh, I, I took the messaging exercise with it together. Yeah. And that took me five minutes to present what I do. Mm -hmm. And then because you said, tell them you're not going to do project management, it hit me at that moment um, uh, spontaneously that if this is what I'm offering and I don't do project management, then this is because that is why it's not. And that's exactly what I told them. What I presented to you is not project management. I didn't tell them I'm not going to do project management. I just said, what I do is not project management. And then I, I spend it um, saying, actually, this is a design stage before that. Yeah. And that's where strategy comes in. And suddenly I, I could explain clearly to myself and to them, what is it really I'm offering? And, and that's the value too. And that's where you're getting yes. paid, where you're getting paid for adding the strategic value into one of these projects, yes. where so many people that are uh, that should be being paid yes. for that side of things are giving it away with the hope that they're going to get the afterward the project work. So in basically in a 20-minute chat with them, um, I was able to do, even from suboptimal opening uh, situation, because they already had the agreement verbally with me that I'll, I'll be coming as a project manager. Yeah. So uh, it's not that the, uh, the discussion started open-minded. They already were fixed on a on a route. In less than twenty minutes, I could show them that actually it's a different route, and they said, "Yeah, sure, come in." <laughs> That's fantastic. So they were the process, the conversational nature of it, and actually, uh, you know, uh, what to probably take out of the process. Yes. Uh, rather than adding complexity to it. So um, uh, what I'd love to know, um, is there anything that you've experienced in the Forge that's been sort of surprising value or is there any way that we've supported you in a way that uh, has been especially helpful? Yeah, all of it, uh, really. Uh, I would say that it's really simple. It's digestible steps. And I do mentor people in all kinds of areas. Yeah. 
and I try to make it digestible to them. And I see how you do that to me, and I appreciate it. I, I, I know how difficult it is to make it manageable to chew at each step. <laughs> and um, I, I, now it's not blind trust. Many times I don't understand or I don't get it or it's kind of against my I believe in. Um, so I, I do challenge and n not for the sake of challenge, but to make sure that it should make sense to me because... Yeah. And what I've found is by yeah. pe having people like yourself uh, and these other different diverse personalities in the room, the challenges that you have, the questions, whatever it might be, inform the other people because... Um, yeah. I'm not just yeah. throwing you under the bus. There's there's always a reason, and I do try and give that yes. reason. But sometimes, you know, the, the, yes. there's some other information or experience that's in my head. Yeah, that's right. And then I I really still remember before we uh, engaged on the force that you told me I ask you explicitly how long how how much time from my week is this going to take, and you said almost nothing. And it's still there. <laughs> it's still almost <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what, would, what advice, I guess, uh, bringing this together, what advice would you give to anybody who is in that situation where uh, they have expertise, uh, they're just not getting the sort of work that they want or they're not getting enough of the work? What would you say to that person in regards to, to this program? I would say um, that it's, it's a simple process that works mm -hmm. and it's simply, really simply about trusting it and doing it. Yeah, and our, our trust isn't uh, trust is not just given as earned, and so uh, hopefully we've been able to do that to you know in those small increments. You can basically switch them, right? Do it to trust it, but do it. Uh, the, the do part is the important thing. Yeah, absolutely. don't overdo it, don't underdo it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> just, do, just do what we said. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So I love that, and uh, uh, I'm super proud of the, the the stuff that you're doing and the good awesome work here. you're continuing to do. So that's very very good. It makes me feel good, uh, Thank you. and. Uh, one of the things I've certainly realized through the process of working with you and a number of other people is that uh, a, a key piece that, that the Forge has that I guess a lot of other programs don't is uh, how to get yourself out of your head and how to get it into these tiny uh, digestible actions on a weekly basis that build that thing that's going to give you everything you want. Yes, uh, because I... We, we also talked about it. I, I have been enrolled in other programs before. Um, some of them are way more expensive as well. <laughs> Got to pull the prices up. <laughs> but uh, as you said, it wasn't that just I couldn't use it. And I, I had to stop it midway because I see the value. I just cannot touch it. It, it doesn't talk to me that I, I cannot actually go and implement it. So, and they couldn't break it down to me. So it's like you step up to the mountain. I don't know how to climb yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, look, Robert, thank you so much for being on the call with us today. Um, and uh, for everyone else who's watching, if you've got any questions about uh, what Robert does, obviously put there, he can answer them as well. Uh, what we're doing on the Forge, if you've got any questions about that, please ask. It's a business program for those people who are looking to put, ideally, more 60K clients um, into their business on an ongoing basis. So you build that system with the sales and marketing so that it's working consistently. Um, uh, thanks again, Robert. And uh, until Thank next you. time, stay passionate. And I'll Cheers, catch you on the next one. Bye for now.